Now at number 14, we have World by Bella Schmurda. Now, if you guys have been listening to The Wave over the past couple of weeks, thank you. Um, but you would note that this is definitely the Bella Schmurda fan club. And all I have to say about Bella is that this boy is truly, or this young man is very, very spiritual and gifted. And talking about World, right, we are all familiar with this hit record. But right Right off the opening line, Bella says, if I ever lie to the world, I can never lie to myself. We get a glimpse, we get some insight into the uncompromising honesty um, from Bella Schmurda. And really, that's what I like so much about this song. You know, so much, so, so often in music, we talk about, you know, highlighting certain values and principles that might not necessarily be the best. But when it comes to Bella Schmurda, I'm really proud of the fact that he was able to create a song that was so heartfelt, so honest, and it was able to capture the hearts and minds of so many people across the world. Bella Bella is prolific and poetic, you know, highlighting the ironies of life. At number 13, we have Joe Boy Focus. As a culture, right, we need to take a moment. We need to give Joe Boy a round of applause. Um, I think it's really important we appreciate his songwriting. Focus examines the disorienting nature of love as both parties do the mental gymnastics, trying to peer into each other's mind. You know, does this person really like me? Are they really feeling me? Are they taking me along for the ride? You know, that kind of paranoia, that kind of thought process that goes on in both parties. And we see Joe Boy kind of take a more, you know, he's very relaxed with his songwriting, but he's able to convey so much. As Joe Boy sings, you get an idea of just how crazy this love interest is making him. Um, the track is produced by MOG. Definitely big shout outs to him for this lovely tune. It's sweet, it's subtle, and it's extremely heartfelt. <laughs> At number 12, we have Mona Lisa by Loje and Sars. Now, sometime in 2022, we're going to need to have an in-depth conversation about the greatest producers in Afropop. But don't be surprised if we curate a list and Sars is probably number one or in the top three at the very least. This year, he has been relentless in showcasing his dexterity and undisputed hit-making ability with several EPs and collaborative projects. Of course, talking about the project um, right now with um, Lo J. Coming back to this record, Mona Lisa. Now, being a producer, sometimes people just talk about production as if it's just like you know making dope beats but uh, when you when you go behind the scenes you learn that production is a lot more than that you know it's about guiding the artist into making the most of their strengths to create the best kind of music and so far Saz has shown a unique ability to do that now the spotlight is not just on Saz moving on to Lo J his performance on this is stellar from the metaphors in the songwriting to the confidence in his delivery, right from the first line, you know, follow my commandy like a zombie. He sets the tone for the fact that he is firmly in control, even though as we later listen, you know, he kind of relinquishes said control as he is firmly enthralled by Mona Lisa, the subject of his affection. It's, it's very sexual, um, to say the least. Easily one of the biggest and definitely one of the best hit records of 2021. Now, my favorite part of this record, it has to be the submerge guitar chords in the bridge um if you know if you if you submerge anything it's a wavy fave for me um definitely Saz, Saz is just like flexing on us at this point that's really what I feel like he's been doing there's this mythical enchanting element that heightens the fairy tale um theme of Mona Lisa and when a song comes together it really comes together and that's that's all I have to say right <laughs> 
Now at number 11, we have Bloody Samaritan by Ira Star. Now, Ira Star is definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest breakout star of 2021. And it's not hard to see with a record like Bloody Samaritan. This song has had a huge cultural impact um, over the past year. And while having a machinery like the Maven, having the Don himself, Don Jazzy in your corner, definitely makes it easy to get your music in everyone's faces there is something to be said about the magic of music in creating moments and that's what i think bloody samaritan does so well now the london produced track is a thumping nigerian rendition of ama piano ama piano is probably the most played out sound. We had a conversation earlier um, about whether Nigeria or South Africa, who does the Ama Piano sound best. You can check that out. I think that was episode three. It's also available on our YouTube channel. But aside from that, you know, let's not delve into that quagmire. This is my favorite Ira Star record. Um, on this track, she is defiant, and I think that's what a lot of people relate to with this song. The juxtaposition of words like blood, bloody and Samaritan, you know, Nigeria has a long history with military rule. So when, when they call you a bloody civilian or a bloody something, you know, it's not exactly a compliment. And I think it's used as a clever literary device. Um, oftentimes in life, we're presented with individuals, frenemies, whatever you want to call them that on the surface might act like they're looking out for you or give you or seem to be giving you sound advice but in reality they're really just saying things in an attempt to hold you back and make themselves look good now one of the things i love again so much about this track is just how self-assured ira is on this track mentioning that whatever she desires she's going to receive it um, she's manifesting her destiny. And, you know, sometimes in Afropop, that, that theme is absent. Credit is often given to a higher power. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. But I love the balls of being able to say, nah, I'm making this happen for myself. <laughs> All right, now we're in the top 10, the heaviest hitters of the year. I know a few people are probably biting their nails at this point. Who's going to be in the top 10? Who's going to be in the top 10? Well, let's find out. Introducing us to the top 10 best Afropop songs of 2021. These two mega stars, divas need no introduction, but we have Tiwa Savage Featuring Brandy, Somebody Son. Now, this is the diva, the love anthem of the year. Sometimes you find yourself falling in love or have fallen in love and you fall in love again and again and again. And, you know, you fail, you pick yourself up and you fail and you have heartbreaks. And on the surface, when people ask, are you going back into the market? You might say no. And you're not saying no because you hate the concept, but just because you've been hurt so many times. But deep down, deep down within your heart, you hold on to a glimmer of hope. Someday, someone out there is going to come in and sweep you off your feet and love you for who you really are. And I think that's what this song represents. Somebody's Son is a a mature love ballad and a legendary collaboration. On a sentimental level, it's a mark of triumph for Tiwa Savage. Starting off her career in the States, being a backup singer and then choosing to return to Nigeria to pursue being a pop star, Tiwa was able to achieve her wildest dreams and have a smash hit alongside one of her idols off of the strength of her own talent in her home country of Nigeria. Now, Brandy's edition is unexpected, but beautiful. I mean, what else do you expect? I love the fact that she embraces a little bit of Yoruba in her verse. And I love how committed she has been to the record. Um, you know, they've been sharing countless stories. They've been doing a lot of videos, a lot of behind the scenes. Um, and I just love how supportive Brandy has been of Tiwa Savage. 
In 2022 and beyond, I really hope that we can continue this holistic cross-Atlantic African brotherhood, sisterhood. Moments like this really enrich and, you know, make the culture so much more beautiful. Now at number nine, we have Crayon, Too Correct, featuring Rema. Now before we get into this song, we cannot give too many, too much accolades to Don Jazzy. I mean, talking about Ira Star, we've already doffed our hats to the Don. But for well over a decade, you know, he's been committed to complete Afropop dominance. I don't know if we're in Maven 3, this should be Maven 4.0, right? I hope I'm I hope I'm not disgracing myself. But you know, he's moved the superstar age even lower, ushering an even younger generation of hit makers. As a star boy, as a young pretty boy, sometimes you know you be feeling a girl, um, but you don't want to make it too obvious so as not to make it seem like you're too thirsty but you know really this baby is blowing your mind and that's where record like too correct comes in i'm probably not the biggest rema fan i'm probably the biggest rema fences instead and while his talent and melodic choices are important impeccable i often get the feeling that he's still within his comfort zone but you know all of that is just yans because on this song his comfort zone is perfectly fine with me Rema has this unique ability, right, to weave references, phrases, and idioms in such a nonchalant way that's actually really creative and unique. For example, I would have never known that abololo, I hope I'm saying that right, is like um, a term. I think he mentioned in the video, it's a term for a bold cut. Now, of course, this is Crayon's song, and I'm not in any way trying to say that Rema outshines Crayon. You know, they trade lines and they set each other up in playing up the escapade scene. I think that Crayon and Alpha P are probably the only two artists that can match Rema's reckless sexuality in writing and in tone. This is definitely a bad boy anthem. It's straight to the point. There's no lovey-dovey P on this and it's a record that I have been bumping all year long. Shout out to Andre Vibes on production of this lovely record. Now at number eight, we have Mood by Wizkid featuring Buju. I feel like what Wizkid has done this year is has been completely unfair. He's he's just kept his foot on the throttle. All of the talk of you know Wizkid might be falling off. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard anybody dare say that. And of course, Buju is probably the most valuable feature um, maker right now in Afropop. He's, He's just been giving people hits all year long. Now, mood has become synonymous with having a good time. And that is what this record embodies. It personifies, it captures the essence of having a good time with lovely people, with lovely women, being carefree. And, you know, it's captured the hearts and minds of people all across the world. I mean, for Wizkid to drop an album like Made in Lagos and then to come back with the deluxe and have smash hit after smash hit and also to open himself up and open the doors for younger artists to also share the spotlight is nothing short of commendable this song is definitely a big mood and you know it's it's just been going crazy all year long now at number seven we have sip alcohol by Joe Boy. Could Joe Boy be the only artist to be featured twice in our top 15? You guys are just gonna have to stay tuned to find out. But like I mentioned, Joe Boy has this understated hit making ability that is truly undeniable, right? And while his PR might not be as, you know, all encompassing as other artists featured on this list, he still keeps his voice on the airways with quality. Now, alcohol is pretty on 
on the nose. He just needs to unwind, ease his mind, have a good drink. And with the way things have been going in with this new decade, it's no surprise that our culture is, you know, more openly embracing this explicit stress relief in alcohol and, you know, it's sometimes frequent collaborator weed. Now, this song doesn't necessarily descend into debauchery. Joe Boy still maintains his good-mannered nature, but he's not here for any bad vibes. I think that has been a common theme, right? Everybody is here for a good time. Of course, while this song was originally titled Alcohol, Joe Boy had to, you know, add the word sip to avoid censorship from what I'd consider an archaic committee at the MBC. <laughs> Now at number six, we have Rock by Olamide. Now Olamide is most definitely the most successful hip hop artist in Nigerian music. And as he inches closer to a decade of dominance in the Nigerian music scene, 2021 marked a more mellow, a more melodic turn in the prolific MC's career as he traded the bars for more subdued and deeper crooning. As one of the earlier hits of the year, Rock has been pretty inescapable, being featured on most of our favorite Bad Bees TikTok reels, IG posts, and stories. Produced by S Keys, the keys in this really drive the track. I think that, you know, I I didn't really think about how much the the subtlety of the keys played a part in making this song stand out. Um, They give it a touch of elegance and the lightness complements Olamide's more baritone delivery. There's a lot of desire and adoration in Olamide's lyrics, giving an indication as to why this track has been so popular with the ladies. And the lady who provides ad-libs on the, you know, first verse of this track gives it a different twist on the call and response and overall i have to say this is a very well put together record at number five we have bling 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 by black bones featuring buju and amari round of applause for buju and amari like these two guys are the feature king and queens of afropop every time you have amare on a record you know it's going to be a hit and buju this year like i said he's just been giving hits bling is one of my favorite hit records of the year i love how black bones has been unapologetic in embracing melodic rap i love just the carefree nature of this song this is one of the best posse cuts of the year one of the best songs of the year definitely been on repeat um and shout out to everybody that's on this record now at number four we have peru para peru donde para by Fireboy DML. Yes, the student has become the master. Besides being a very successful rapper, Olamide has developed what is arguably the most successful artist-run label in Nigeria. Now, this is something that not many rappers can boast of, and adding to the long list of superstars he has helped to nurture is none other than Fireboy DML. Peru is what you call an instant hit or what I'd call an instant hit. From the first moment this song dropped and I pressed play, I was like, ah, it's it's gone. This is a hit. And, you know, as people perceive music to be more and more formulaic, the artistic ability to convey effortlessness while still being able to connect with the listener is a skill that many seek, but few have. Now, with Peru, it's not necessarily technically complex in production, but Fireboy's ability to weave seemingly unrelated themes through phonetics is what makes this song so special. Peru is definitely a lovely country, but the South American nation is hardly uh, a dream destination for many, if any, Nigerians. Still, Fireboy uses it as a launch pad to convey freedom, love, despair, and so many other emotions. 
Now, it's no surprise that one of the biggest artists in the world, Ed Sheeran, picked this song to be his first Afropop feature. And I'm sure deep down he wishes he could write a song like Peru. And I think this is just one example of the flavor that Nigerians bring to the global scene. One of the things we really love to see, I'm so proud that, you know, Nigerian music, Afropop is helping change the perception. But yeah, this is a memorable jam. I think it's going to be with us for a long time. Shout out to Ed Sheeran for showing love and doing it for the culture on the remix. 